You know, Mr. Felton, thank you for that introduction and moving sermon. And thank you, this incredible congregation, for welcoming me as you have. It really means a day. Across the way in Delaware, I attended morning mass in my church and head to Sunday services of black churches, as I said early on. I've always felt the power of your faith in good times and in tough times. The fact is, the scripture says, all things work together for good <laughs> to those who love God are and are called according to his purpose. Our purpose is to serve others. That's our purpose. To know everyone is entitled to be treated with dignity and respect. To know faith without works is dead. We're all called to be doers of the world. In this nation, that means keeping our eyes on the North Star, the very idea of America, that we're all created equal in the image of God and deserve to be treated with dignity and respect our entire lives. We've never fully lived up to that, but we've never fully walked away from it either. And that's because of you and generations before you who led the church from slavery to freedom, always praying, always believing that joy cometh in the morning. You've never given up. In my life, and as your president, I've tried to walk my faith to get us through the pandemic that claimed a million loved ones and left eight million people with an empty chair at dinner or breakfast because of someone they lost. To ensure that the economy has the lowest black unemployment and more black small businesses in decades. To rebuild and ensure black America has a peace of mind that comes with health care for everybody. <laughs> to ensure you can follow your dreams without the burden of student debt. <laughs> to make housing affordable, help more black families build wealth and pass it on to future generations. <laughs> to keep our community safe by getting weapons of war off our streets. <laughs> to give hate no safe harbor. While there are those who want to erase history, Kamala and I want to make it. Because black history is American history. <laughs> of course, there's more to do to deliver jobs and justice. There's more to do. But above all, we need to protect our rights, the rights of all Americans, to make sure democracy works for you. Folks, I know with every fiber of my being, I know I won't look like I'm 40 years old, but I've been around a little bit. <laughs> the bishop and I were talking about that. It's heck turning 40. But all kidding aside, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and I, honest to God, have never been more optimistic about America's future if we stick together. Yeah. I really mean it. Here's what else I've learned, and many of you have learned. You walk your faith as well. We're all imperfect beings. We don't know where or what fate will deliver us to or when. But we do know is that we can seek a life of light, hope, love, and truth, no matter what. We can seek that life. Take all of our experiences and give everything we have to work together. Because when we do, you can't stop us. I, really, I mean this sincerely. I'm about to host the NATO nations in Washington. We put them together. We've done, the world's looking to us. It's not a joke. The world is looking to America. Not to carry their burden, but to lead their hopes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, not, I'm going to be inclined to go on longer than I should here, so I'm not going to. But I just want to say, look, I think that we just have to work together. I believe. 
When I ran the first time for president, I said something basic. I said, we have to bring back dignity and hope in America. Number one. Number two, we have to give working class and middle class people like the family I came from a shot and build the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. And thirdly, we must unite America again. That's my goal. That's what we're going to do. God bless you all, and may God direct our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dana Bash in Washington. That was President Biden speaking at the Mount Airy Church of God, of God in Christ, a prominent States. black church in Philadelphia. The parishioners there are a key part of Biden's coalition. And you just heard there, they gave him an enthusiastic welcome this morning. God knew President Biden needs some love. And God sent him here today so that we can show him. Come on, let's show him some love. We did not come to beat up on you, to put you down, to criticize you, to magnify your flaws or mistakes. We come to love you. That was just one stop on the president's swing state tour this week. He's expected to visit Michigan on Friday as he tries to stave off calls to step aside from the 2024 race, even as there are some new signs that Democratic opposition to his candidacy is growing. I want to bring in two very well-connected Democrats, CNN political commentators Van Jones and Bakari Sellers. Nice to see you both. Uh, first and foremost, I I'm sure you were able to listen to what President Biden just said, talking about all of the, the reasons why he believes he should be president again, but then at the end uh, saying... He joking that he only looks 40 years old and that he's never been more optimistic if we stick together. Van, I'll start with you. Well, look, I mean, he's, he's, he's still in the race and he's, he's doing what he's supposed to do. I'm glad to see him out there. I'm, I'm glad he's doing interviews. I'm glad he's doing all those things. Uh, the, the challenge is that the numbers are not encouraging and uh, the party is no longer united. Um, you already have four House Democrats who are uh, saying step down. You're going to have more. <laughs> you're going to have more. This week, unfortunately, you're going to have the split screen of the president having you know, NATO allies here and people in his own party looking at this math. As David Axelrod said, this time four years ago, Biden was up 10. He's down six. Uh, we needed that debate to turn things around. It did turn things around in a negative direction. And so I think that he's going to have to look in his heart. This is a party that loves him. I've never heard so many people say about a politician, I love this man. Not just I respect him, not just I admire him. I love Joe Biden. He is beloved in this party, and yet he may not be able to get us across the finish line. And I think people are hoping that he will um, recognize we're running Kamala Harris for president right now. <laughs> She's, that's who we're running. Uh, nobody believes Joe Biden's going to be president in four years. And so we're in the worst possible world because... She can't defend herself. She has to defend him. We can't defend her. We have to defend him. If we're, if we're basically running Kamala Harris anyway, let's run Kamala Harris and let her get out there and, and defend herself and accept that's where we are. The reality is we are running Kamala Harris for president one way or the other. I'd rather run her for president in the strongest way rather than the weakest way. Bakari? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think that my good friends David Axelrod and Van Jones are articulating very good points. But the fact is, that's just not where we are. And the, the, we are in a position right now where Joe Biden is the president of the United States and Joe Biden is running for re-election. Everything else is, is conjecture. I was at Essence this weekend with Kamala Harris. I was with her a couple of weeks ago. The vibes were what the vibes were. They were high, enthusiastic, not just about uh, the vice president, but about going out and voting. And I think what people are missing outside of D.C. or or when you're talking to other journalists is that when you go out into the streets of America, I was fishing and caught about eight crappy last week in Orangeburg County with uh, my good friend Jared Lodehode and his uncle. And we were just sitting back there having a conversation, just a, a group of black men. And, and everybody was was resigned to the fact that, look, we're going to go out and do what we have to do and vote for Joe Biden, because I think that people missed the mark when they make this about Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Because for many of us who find our community
communities in a place of, of survival so often, you're not voting for the man. You're voting for the ideals. You're voting for the administration. You're voting for the things they can push forth. And so I'll let others have the conjecture about the, the gamesmanship and of who's going to be the nominee and when and where. I have to live in the reality that Joe Biden is the nominee now and he looks to be the nominee for the for the for the future. Um, and he's going to be our horse in November. I mean, we can have all those other conversations. But right now, I've had conversations with people who are running the convention. I've had conversations with people who are DNC members. He's not going anywhere. I've had conversations with the White House. He's not going anywhere. And so we need to either choose Donald Trump choose Joe Biden or choose the couch. Everything else is is somewhat wasted energy. Van, we have about 50 uh, seconds I, left. Go for it. Respond, please. I, well, I, I, I do see it differently in terms of, you know, I'm also talking to people on the ground, including places like Michigan, which is must, must win. Uh, I, I can't find a single person who wants Joe Biden to stay on the ticket, and I'm looking. Uh, it's it, people, yes, there are people who realize if it comes down to it, I'll vote for a uh, a wet Elmo doll and running with a, a, a dead skunk over Trump. I think a lot of people are going to do that. 